morning, everyone. Our opening hymn this morning will be People Look East for those at home with hymnals. It's hymn number 724 from the hymnal. Last Sunday, the candle of peace was lit. We light it and the candle of hope again as we remember that Christ will come again and bring to the world everlasting peace. The third candle of Advent is the candle of joy. We light this candle to remember that Christ brings the promise of a new life and to remember that he is the bringer of true and everlasting joy. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And let us pray together the colic for this day. Stir up your power, O Lord, with great might. Come among us 
And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now let us be attentive to the word of God. The first lesson is from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to, pro to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will, I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let's join together in reading the psalm. When the Lord, the Lord restored, restored the, the fortunes, fortunes of Zion, Zion then, then were we like those who dream. Then, then our, our mouth was filled, filled with laughter and our, our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come, come again, again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second lesson is from Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. There was a man from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask you, him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. And for those at home, make yourselves comfortable, please. That does not mean it's going to be super long. <laughs> in our second reading from Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica, we hear him saying, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The third Sunday of Advent is known as Gaudete Sunday, which literally translates rejoice. Pink or rose represents joy or rejoicing and reveals a shift in the season of Advent, away from a season of repentance and a move toward celebration. The third Advent candle color on our wreath is pink. It is named the shepherd candle or the candle of joy. However, these words, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, may seem too difficult, especially this year for us, in a world dominated by a pandemic, racial unrest, and continued political upheaval. It feels a bit like we've been dominated by violence and growing fears all around us. We open the newspaper or turn on the TV and what do we find? The number of infections with the virus in our country seems to know no limits and the deaths keep mounting daily. In our country, we also observe frightening conflicts between blacks, whites, and Latinos between minorities and law enforcement, between the haves and the have-nots. We've seen an increase in domestic violence and abuse as a result of the stresses brought about by the interruption of normal life and our ability to go out. With all this going on, how can Paul invite us to rejoice? And yet, Paul is not just writing some platitudes. He is writing to a community who themselves are facing oppression from their beliefs. He himself has known suffering for his belief in Christ and writes to a community confused by the fact that Christ still hasn't had his second coming that they assumed would happen any day. Paul continues to write to the people of Thessalonica, May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, 
and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you faithful, and he will do this. He is not writing about some sense of peace that denies the painful realities of life, but instead a peace that existed and exists in the midst of them. It was a sense of peace that was not based on logic, but rather on relationship, not based on the environment around you, but rather on the friend beside you, a peace that he also writes again to the church in Philippi some 12 years later after he wrote this letter to the church of Thessalonica, and that one from Philippi was written in prison when he was already sentenced to death, and he writes to Thessalonica that that passes understanding, guarding your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, who has been born for us, to us, and to be with us in our times of violence, fear, division, and confusion. And if there is a time for that kind of peace for us, it's right now. I actually experienced this kind of peace over the past few weeks on a personal level. It began earlier this year when my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer. Surgery was set for November, and then we got the word that she contracted the COVID virus. She was not hospitalized, but was at home, largely by herself since she lives alone. She caught it along with three other members of her church choir. They kept singing, remain six feet apart, but that was not enough to stop the spread of the molecules in the air. And I think they were also masked. But we've learned something that singing or coughing or sneezing pushes the molecules further past the mask, whether we have a mask or not. She had a long period before she felt better and the surgery had to be rescheduled. She just recently had her surgery and is doing much better. The night before the surgery, she had a reminder of that peace that Paul talks about that comes through relationship. A group of about 12 neighbors came together outside her house in the garage. She came out and they prayed over her and blessed her for her surgery the next day. A true witness of joy in the midst of pain and fear. She said it was one of the most moving moments in her life. Then shortly after Thanksgiving, my dad was diagnosed with COVID. At 85, he's had a much harder time, and it was a tough touch and go for several days over the past couple of weeks in the hospital. I am happy to report he came home yesterday. He is still weak, but he is at home all the same, doing better. I can attest to the kind of peace Paul is talking about. It was not avoiding the pain, but finding the joy, the gaudete in the midst of it, the unexpected joys and hearing from people and their constant concern for me and my family. It actually brought our family closer together in Michigan and elsewhere. It was the gaudete of friends and neighbors and many of you here at St. Peter's that gave me the peace which passes all understanding. And as my brother Tim said to me, now that dad is going home, you can stop praying for him and start praying for me. <laughs> I said to him, I will pray for you, Tim, but remember, I'm a priest, not a miracle worker. Each of us has lost something or someone this year that may, we have, may have loved and known. We might have lost our jobs or had trouble making ends meet or putting food on our tables. We may have struggled with health issues. We may have had a friend or a neighbor who themselves has had a tragic loss during this time of compounded losses. Yet, it has still been a year when the peace that Paul proclaims has been there often hidden right in plain sight. So here I stand in my festive rose-colored vestment, 
a sign that joy is on the way. And with the virus being met by the, the um, vaccine, hopefully that that true joy is come soon. It is a reminder we can not only anticipate the joy of Christmas, but with confidence proclaim that it is already ours because of him who has been born to us, for us, and is with us and through the tough times of our lives, even if we don't experience it. In spite of the times in which we live, we with confidence can proclaim, Gaudé, Gaudé, Emmanuel, Nashe te prote, Israel. Amen. I invite you all to join in professing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us prepare for a time of prayer for our church and the world. The prayers of the people. In the hushed anticipation of your coming, O Lord, remind us that you are always with us, that like Joseph, we might always be eager to fulfill your will and be eager to pray. O God, in days to come, your house will be established and your joy shall reign. We pray for the church, for our presiding bishop, Michael, for our bishops, Ian and Laura, for our priest, Father Ron, especially on the anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood, for our deacon Donna, and for all deacons and priests. We pray for all who proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth, and for all who seek the truth. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Stephen's Bloomfield, St. George's Bolton, Trinity Branford, those who advocate at the local, state, national, or global level for the poor, the lonely and the oppressed. Come, Lord Jesus. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and you, O God, shall judge between the nations. We pray for our nation and its leaders, and all nations, that your peace would be manifest in every corner of the earth. 
Come, Lord Jesus. Hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. In your kingdom, wolves lie down with lambs and children play with serpents without fear. We pray for the sick, the suffering, and those in distress of any kind. Art Kolonowski, Loretta Ickes, Harry Deneker, Peter Myers, Eileen Doughty, Phil Chip Lewis, Bob Kell, Stephen, Eusebio Martinez, Denise Ward, Francine Block, Robin Kennefick, Karen Toms, Audrey Gasper, Barb LeMay, Julia Johnson, and my brother Richard Hagenau, that you would heal all injuries, comfort all grief, and settle all wrongs. Come, Lord Jesus. Hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died, remembering especially Stephanie, Stephanie Wheeler's mother, Joyce Leon Bruno. We pray for those who suffer the loss of family, friends, and neighbors, especially those who died of the virus and those dying alone in hospitals and nursing homes, that they may be comforted by those who love them. Let them discover your love through the care and support of others. Come, Lord Jesus, hear our our prayer. prayer. In your kingdom, even the wilderness and dry land are glad and rejoice. We pray for those who rejoice this week as they celebrate their birthdays, especially Grace Downey, Hannah Mangifico, Talon Kozlak, Emily Messier, Aaron Woods, Allison Bradley, Amy Stone, Liz Sear, John Gerke, that they might obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing might flee away. Come, Lord Jesus. Hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray this day? I ask your prayers for Clint Rossiter, a friend whose wife Barbara and I knew each other from Storrs Congregation in St. Mark's who died last night. O Christ, hear our prayers, restore us, and show us your glory at light of your countenance that we may be saved. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And for those at home, share a sign of peace with one another, and the few of us that are here will do the same with one another. Peace to you all and those of you at home. I have just a couple of announcements this day. The first is to thank all of those last week who participated in our Christmas store. We weren't able to do the fair as we've usually done because of the, we had a terrible weather also on Saturday. So when I arrived here last Sunday, our tent that we set up with all of the stuff underneath, the stuff was taken in the parish hall, but the tent collapsed under the snow. There were people here first thing cleaning up the tent and then taking out tables outside and setting up tables in the parking lot and continuing to operate the Christmas store on Sunday. And they got very creative and ended up having a lot of fun because there was a fire pit that I brought from home and they kept a fire going. And at the end of the day, they all got together and had hot dogs that they roasted on the fire pit. So everyone had a good time. And so with that kind of energy and fun, there's a, a plan that's kind of beginning to take shape for something in January that might involve our, our path across the street and the fire pit at the other end of it for also some celebration. So we'll keep everybody posted on that. I sent out in my a special update last week, this past week, about our bylaws. The Bestry has been looking at our bylaws, which haven't been really cleaned up since 2001. A lot of them are just technical changes, but we emailed them to everyone that's on our mailing list and in the parish to look at them. The major change that's coming is asking if you approve the vestry's sentiment that we might extend um, the six six one-year consecutive terms for our officers, which would match the, the rest of the terms for the rest of the vestry members. And so on Wednesday of this week, 
we'll have a Zoom call, and I sent a link so you can, if you have questions or would like to discuss the bylaws. And then following that conversation, we'll be sending out an electronic vote for you to email back your vote for those who are eligible to vote for the bylaws. We want to get this done before the annual meeting because it affects our election. We're not sure we will even have the annual meeting live because it's in January. So most likely we'll be having some kind of a virtual annual meeting, unfortunately, this year until we get past this pandemic. Um, the last thing I want to mention is we are putting together our Christmas bulletin. We want to get it finished this coming week. So if you still want to include memorial names and you have been mailed a card, you need to pop it in the mail by tomorrow um, so we get it in time. And if you don't want to do it that way, you can simply email names. Don't worry about making a contribution. Um, to simply email office at St. Peter's Hebron, all one word, dot com. So that again, that's office at St. Peter's Hebron, one word, dot com. Just include the names of those you would like to have remembered that you've loved or in honor of folks that are still alive. You can do that as well. So please get that into us as soon as possible. And with that, we begin to prepare our table for Eucharist. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. prayer now continues with Eucharistic prayer A. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Peter and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. And all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God given for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And as we continue with the pandemic, we are unable to share 
the physical elements of the body and blood of our Lord. And so I invite us to pray a spiritual prayer of communion as we take Christ into our hearts and prepare with joy for this Christmas season. Let us pray. God of love and grace, of justice and peace, we give you thanks that in the sacrament of the altar, you assure us of your presence within us and within the body of Christ. The faithful through all generations grant that we who have witnessed anew these holy mysteries, though unable to receive the physical elements of the sacrament, may be moved by your indwelling spirit ever more fully to embody your holy and life-giving presence, reshaping in your likeness the world around us until we are gathered at last into the fullness of your glorious and eternal presence through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Let us have a time of meditation with music. And now, as we've taken Christ into our hearts and lives, let us give thanks with our post-communion prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. 
Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing upon yourselves and I'll be using the words Paul gave us today. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this day is Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord, hymn 437. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.